There it comes. Welcome. Uh, beautiful afternoon, isn't it? Beautiful fall afternoon, finally. Today's session, we're going to be talking about attaching documents in Connect Carolina and providing some tips and tricks. I'm Sharon Boquin. I manage the document management team, um, one of the teams that I manage with Enterprise Applications. And I'm joined with my team, Suzanne Kaur, Mike Cleary, and Belle McCoy. And they'll be, each one of us will have, they'll be covering the meat of the sessions. And so they'll introduce themselves when they come up. What we're going to talk about today is our agenda. We're going to do a uh, cover a few topics that are common. We're not going to necessarily touch on, um, and all of you that are using Connect Carolina and doing any document uploads, you're using our product. We actually are the repository. It's called Perceptive Content, or otherwise previously known as ImageNow. How many of you have ever heard of the name? Okay, a few. Um, so that's the name of the product that the documents reside in. But we're not going to talk about the product. We're going to take a step back and we're going to give you some tips and tricks, talk about different things you can do to uh, get better content on your attachments, not just uploading into Connect Carolina. What we're going to cover, you'll be able to apply across. So if you need to scan a document, take a, make a copy on a copier, you'll know more about what some of these terms mean. We're going to get into on each one of the topics, resolution, color, and file format. We're going to talk about technical terms, so you're going to kind of level set and introduce you to so what the meanings are. We're going to give you some of the use cases, how you can actually accomplish doing those, and examples, what it means and how, what it would look like if you chose different settings. We're also going to touch on a little bit about what scanning with Carolina copiers, because that's actually used broadly across campus by users that need to upload documents. You go in, you scan something, it sends you an email with that attachment that you can upload in different documents um, in, throughout Connect Carolina, HR Finance and Campus Solutions. And then we're going to provide some reference materials. We're going to give you a couple of different things. If you are interested and looking at later, you can re, uh, review, as well as some uh, kind of some um, additional tips and some grids of knowing what, pulling all of these together, how you might be able to choose on the settings. So with that said, I'm going to turn it over to Mike. Okay, uh, I'm Mike and I'm going to be talking about uh, resolution actions. Okay. Ah, there we go. So what is resolution? Um, most of the time when people talk about resolution, they, they're, they're referring to things like photographs and stuff. Uh, or maybe the sharpness of the image that you see on your, your computer monitor or or maybe on your television screen. Um, and it may, it may be described simply as sharp or fuzzy, uh, for example, or having a high resolution versus a low resolution. Um, but, and for images such as photographs, things like that, the, the standard um, description is usually in terms of pixels per inch or PPI. Um, as an example, uh, if you look on the, at the picture on the left, uh, that one was scanned at a PPI or pixels per inch of 72. The one on the right was scanned at 300 PPI. And the difference is pretty obvious just looking at the images. The one on the left is pretty fuzzy. And in fact, if you look at the, um, the little exploded inset there, you can actually see the individual pixels on that. Uh, on that particular image, but not the one on the right. Uh, it's much clearer. Okay, <clears throat> so what is meant by resolution as applied to documents? Um, it's, it's similar to, to what you would think about as far as quality of photographs and other images. It's, it's basically the quality of your text and or images if they're included within your document. 
Um, and <clears throat> dots per inch rather than pixels per inch is the common terminology for scanned media. Uh, and for all intents and purposes, dots per inch and pixels per inch are basically the same thing. Um, now, the higher the DPI or dots per inch, the higher the quality of the image you're going to get. Um, but there's a caveat <clears throat> is that scanning at a high DPI can take a long time and you're also going to have a, a, a document that results in, in a, a, much, a much bigger document, very large files at higher DPIs. Now, here's an example. This is just a single page Word document. It's got some text at the top. It has a little, little spreadsheet inset into it. Uh, the one at the left was scanned at 72 DPI, and the one at the right was scanned at 300 DPI. I, I mean, it, the difference is pretty obvious. The one on the left, um, the words, the text is, is fairly fuzzy in places, hard to read. Uh, also, the uh, the dollar amounts that are seen shown in that little spreadsheet are kind of fuzzy and hard to read. Um, whereas the one on the right, there really is no issue reading at all. It's it's much clearer. Um, now, if you wanted to go beyond that and scan to an even higher DPI, um, this one shows 300 DPI is the same as the one on the previous slide, and the one on the right was scanned at 600 DPI. Um, there's very little difference between the two. Um, so there really isn't a whole lot of point in, in going to very high DPIs because uh, you're not going to improve the quality of your image very much and you're, you're going to end up with much bigger files. Um, talking about size, um, again, it's the same one page Word document that was scanned at four different uh, resolutions, the lowest being 72, and it's the smallest size. Uh, if you go from 72 to 150 DPI, it basically doubles in size. Going from 150 up to 300, it more than doubles in size. And if you go all the way up to 600 from 300, it more than triples the size of the document. So that, that's a big consideration as far as um, upload times and even opening the document. So bottom line is um, we recommend for both documents or documents that include images or, or graphs or something like that, you use 300 DPI. Um, although your specific equipment you use may differ, uh, 300 seems to be a very common uh, default setting for uh, scanners, scanners, copiers. And so that's it for resolution. Any questions? So my name is Bell McCoy. I am an analyst on the document management team. And I'm going to be talking about color. So let's see, is that the right button? No. We all love that. It'll <laughs> There we go. Thank you. Okay, so um, kind of like with resolution, the color is going to impact our image quality and our file size. So depending on the color settings that we use, we're going to face some trade-offs there the same way. So we've got three basic color settings that I'm going to be talking about. We've got color, grayscale, and black and white. So we're going to see um, how to select the best color setting for whatever we are trying to do, whatever we're trying to scan, and um, how that's going to affect the, the image and how it comes out. Let's take a look. We'll start off here with some definitions. Um, this is color image, of course. So I'm um, sure pretty much everybody here is aware that when you're looking at a screen, uh, the image you're looking at is made up of lots of tiny little pixels. 
So when you're looking at a color image, um, as you might guess, those pixels are going to be different colors. So it could be any one of millions of different colors. So if we zoom in here on our little square, you can see those pixels are all different colors. Um, it can be basically anything. And that's how we get our color image. So nothing too surprising there. So let's compare that to a grayscale image. I'm going to go to our grayscale picture here. Now, this is what uh, colloquially we might refer to as black and white. Uh, when we say uh, like a black and white picture, a uh, black and white photograph, or a black and white film, what we're really saying is that it's shades of gray, right? So when we're talking about scanning, we're actually calling that grayscale. So grayscale just means that it can be pretty much any shade of gray. We've got a few hundred to choose from, and each pixel can be any one of those shades. So if we pick a little box on here and then zoom in on that, you can see we've got a little pixels and then they can be pretty much any shade of gray. So our last definition is going to be black and white. And as you may have guessed by now, if we go to black and white, each pixel is literally black or white. So you can see we've got a, a little bit of an issue with our quality here as compared to the previous two images. We're starting to lose some of that quality and some of that information. Um, you can still kind of tell it's the well if you uh, are associated with UNC, you probably recognize it. Somebody else might not quite as easily. So if we explode a, a square on here, we're going to see so each pixel is literally black or white. There's only two options. So when we say black and white, that's what we mean in this case. So now that we've seen those definitions, let's take a look at how this affects our scanning. So, oh yeah, we've also got a comparison. Um, so you can see the first two images actually have very similar quality uh, in terms of what you get with black and white versus grayscale. Whereas the last image, um, you're starting to lose some of that quality. It's a little bit harder to reproduce the image um, faithfully using just black and white. So take a look. So uh, from looking at that, you might think, well, we should just always use color, right? But it's not quite that simple. There are some disadvantages to color. Um, color images are about seven times larger than black and white images. So it takes a lot more space to store them, which when you're just storing one file isn't really that big a deal. But the document management group currently stores about 11 million documents in perceptive content, uh, which is our repository that Sharon mentioned. And we're going to be keeping those for potentially decades. Uh, this is very long-term storage. So when you are storing seven times as much, that's about seven times the cost. So you're doing us a huge favor if you're scanning stuff in black and white instead of color. Um, but it doesn't just affect us. It actually can affect you, too, uh, because uh, large documents take longer to open. Remember, these documents are stored on our servers remotely, and when you open one, it's basically being sent uh, across the network to your computer. So a longer, a larger document is going to take longer to do that. There's also some size limits in Connect Carolina when it comes to uploading documents. So if the file that you're trying to upload is over that limit, then you're just not going to be able to upload it. So that's another important consideration uh, with file size that you might run into that can affect you. So let's take a look at some of the different situations that we might encounter, different types of documents, and what we want to use as far as our color settings. So if we're scanning just a regular text document, which is a pretty common thing to scan, we recommend black and white. The advantages are it's a smaller file size, as I mentioned before, and it's really ideal for text because text is inherently black and white. So you're actually not going to see a significant improvement in quality by scanning a text document to color. You'll get just as good of quality using black and white. So it's really um, the ideal, ideal option for when you're scanning documents. 
So this is uh, an example I wanted to use of black and white versus grayscale. The one on the left is black and white, and the one on the right is grayscale. And it's, uh, it's a little difficult to see maybe uh, up here on the projector, but you can see the one on the left is maybe just a tiny bit not as pretty. The lines are a little bit dotted. Um, but what I wanted to point out is that the text itself, both in the top part and the bottom part, is every bit as clear in both of these. So you might think that uh, something like this looks a little prettier in grayscale, but really you're keeping all of the information just as effectively if you're using black and white. Um, so I thought this was a good example because it's not just text. It contains some formatting, a uh, tiny bit of uh, sort of coloration that uh, doesn't come through on the projector very well. But you can see that um, black and white really is ideal for documents. So that's an example of that. So let's go on to our next thing. So if we are not scanning a text document, if we're scanning, say, an ID uh, or a, like a photograph or a picture, we recommend using grayscale. As we saw earlier with that third picture of the well, we really start to lose some quality when we scan black and white. Uh, grayscale will retain a lot of quality similar to color, and we're going to see size that it's about half of color. So it's a really uh, optimal trade-off in terms of quality and size. So for comparison, let's take a look. If we have a grayscale image versus a black and white image, um, we really lose a lot of the quality when we scan this to black and white. So um, if you are scanning pictures, it is important that you select grayscale. Otherwise, what you end up storing is probably not going to be that useful. And um, it's really true of, it's not just the photograph itself. If you look at some of the uh, text area over on the right, which is also part of the image, you're even losing some of that. So the loss of quality on like identification IDs when you scan to black and white is significant. Um, so that's why we recommend grayscale for that. Let's see. And then our third recommendation, there are use cases for color. Um, there's fewer of them, but I think it's worth pointing out. Um, colored text is um, a noteworthy one, particularly if you have light colors, if you have like red or orange or yellow on your image, those tend not to come through very well, even in grayscale. Um, so it can be advantageous to use color for those. Um, color handwriting is probably even more so. Handwriting in general doesn't come through in scanned images and copies quite as well as like printed text. So it's, um, if it's color, it's actually even more important to use color uh, scanning, that, that is, for color handwriting. And then highlighting is another one. Um, it's kind of a, a choice if you want the highlighting to come through. Uh, it's, you see on the right, um, we've got an image that's highlighted. Actually, the top and the bottom one contain highlighting. You can't really see it in the bottom one. Um, but that's a difference of scanning highlighting in color versus black and white. <clears throat> now, there's one more color option that I haven't mentioned yet. Um, we got the color, the grayscale, and black and white. When you're using a, a copier um, and certain scanners, you also have a setting called auto detect color. Uh, this is a picture of a Connect Carolina menu. You, we're going to be showing you some more of these pretty soon. Um, this is just kind of a visual aid for this one. So auto detect means that the scanner is going to intelligently recognize if the document contains color. And if it does, it will scan it in color. Otherwise, it scans it in black and white. So this ends up being a really good, um, good trade-off, particularly if you have like a stack of documents, just a few of which contain highlighting or maybe some writing on them. This can be a really good one to make sure you capture that information effectively without uh, making the document uh, too big. Well, that, that can be a handy setting to use. So, and then, so in addition to color, there is one related subject that I want to tackle. Um, it's called original type, which is another setting on the Carolina copiers, and uh, probably other scanners too are going to have this. The original type defines the source of 
the source document that you're scanning. So you're basically telling it what you're scanning. So if you're scanning a picture, you're saying, copier, I'm scanning a picture. Or if it's text, you're telling the copier that you're scanning text. Um, so the copier will actually use that information to decide how it's going to scan. And the way it does it's pretty technical. It's actually even a bit over my own knowledge set. But it um, basically tells it how to scan the, the image for optimal quality. So we can see an example of that. Uh, this is that ID again. And the one on the left, you can see we selected original type of photo. And then on the right, we selected text for our original type. And you can see there's a pretty dramatic difference in the quality of the image. You really start to lose uh, quite a bit of recognizability and legibility on that second image. So um, you might wonder why something like that would make a difference. But it actually does make a pretty significant difference on the image quality, selecting the, the correct option there. So it's actually a pretty important one to get right. Well, we can see another example here. So this is text that was scanned in photo and text. And you can see the, on the top, it was scanned with it set to text. And on the bottom, it was set to photo. And you can see there's a pretty, you can see there's a noticeable difference there. The text on the bottom, it's not quite as easy to read. Um, it's kind of squiggly and thinner, um, whereas the, the stuff on the top is much more legible. So it makes a difference with text also. Now, I don't know if anybody's. Uh, have this pop into their head yet, but some documents are going to contain photos and text, right? That can happen. So there is a setting for that too. Um, there's the third option is photo and text. So you can select that too. And that's going to look kind of like this. Uh, comes out pretty well. Now, you might think, um, well, you can just use photo and text for everything. Um, that, should, that should get it right if it works for photo and text. But you actually get better quality if you select the the correct one. If you're just scanning text, it really does improve the quality to select text. Uh, and same with photo. If you're scanning like an ID or something where you, it's important to have really good quality, when you come back and look at it later, it's worth it to, to scan it as photo for original type. Let's go on here. So that is our recommendations when it comes to scanning in color. Um, we've got a little summary here for, for your reference, basically. For text, we recommend black and white, pictures and IDs, grayscale, and then we have a few uses for color. We've got that highlighting and the colored text and handwriting. So that is my talk. Are there any questions before I hand things off to Suzanne? All right, thank you. Thanks, Phil. <laughs> I'm Suzanne, and I'm going to talk about file formats. So after um, Bell and Mike have shown you the scanning part, and at the very end of the scanning part, you're going to just save the file, and that's where the file format comes in. And just briefly, a file format is how the data is in, organized inside the file. It's a roadmap for the application to read the file. and um, you specify it at the time that a file is saved. Um, so what's the difference between a file format and a file extension? So a file extension is like the three letters that come after the period and the file name, .doc, .pdf. Those are file extensions. And this is kind of a visual of what a file extension is. So if you go and you change one of those in a file name, um, if you change .doc to .html or something, it doesn't actually change what's inside the file. It just changes the file name. So what we're talking about is the data that's inside the file itself, and that's the file format. A lot of the files you're beginning to up attach for Connect Carolina are going to come to you in electronic format already, and you won't need to scan them, and you'll just be uploading them. And Connect Carolina accepts HTML, PDF, PDFA, which is an archival version of PDF, Microsoft Word, and Microsoft Excel. These are the file extensions that go with those file formats. And just a side note, attaching in Campus Solutions um, 
does not accept Excel files, which are .xls or .xlsx. So if you already have the file in electronic <coughs> format, you can go ahead and attach it as is if it's one of these file formats. Now, if you don't have an electronic copy and you need to scan, uh, make a scan from paper, that's where some considerations come in. A lot of the documents that are uploaded need to be retained for a long time. There's some retention periods, especially in the HR area, of up to 75 years. So the haptic take of a file format that's going to um, endure and be a good one for 75 years. Another consideration is that applications way down the road need to be able to read that format. So that's what we're going to talk about right now. Our recommendation for a file format that's going to endure for a very long period of time is PDFA. It's a portable data, data file archival. It's the archival version of PDF. The A means archival. PDFA is an international standards organization approved format. And what that means is that ISO has basically written a recipe for how to create these files. And it's become a standard and what that means is that the companies that create, write the software follow this roadmap for creating the files. And it's also there in um, this standard way for people years down the road to be able to read these files. This was new to me a, a while ago, so I think it's interesting that not all PDF are the same. There are different flavors of PDF. And that's why PDFA is important because it's based on a standard and there's only one way to create it. This explains a little bit more about what's inside a PDFA file. There are embedded fonts inside the file. And one good reason for embedding the fonts inside the file is that if you don't have the fonts in the file, the PDF viewer could substitute a different font if that the font it needs is not present on the computer. So the PDF may not render as it initially rendered if the font is not embedded. And this is what embedded fonts look like inside a PDFA document. It also has device independent color. And there are other more technical parts of the specification that I'm going to spare you in this presentation. I just want to give you an idea of what, what's in there. PDFA does not include features requiring external software. It doesn't include encryption, active links for external references, or JavaScript. And the rationale behind this is that you have a file that years and years in the future, everything you need to render that file is going to be inside that file. How can you tell if a file is PDFA? Unfortunately, the file extension for a PDFA file is exactly the same as for a regular PDF. It's that PDF caps or not PDF lowercase. And when you open a PDFA document, though, there will be a notification at the top that's similar to this one, and it says that the file is compliant with PDFA. So this is great and all, but after our presentation, let's say you go back to your office and you look at your scanner or the copier that you have, and it doesn't have PDFA on it. A lot of the older scanners won't have PDFA. And if it's not available, we recommend that you save as just regular PDF. 
and Mike is now going to talk about Carolina copiers. Does anybody recognize a machine like this? How many people have machines like this? Oh, then you probably already know what I'm going to tell you. But this is the one that, that uh, we have in our office. And there, as Sharon pointed out earlier, it's fairly common across campus. Um, and what I'm going to show you is, um, I don't know if you've used this feature or not, but you can scan a document with this machine and email it to yourself or, or someone else. Um, and you can use some of the options that, that Bell went into detail about. Um, so that's kind of what I'm going to walk through. For those of you who are familiar with it, it will be a repeat. But you just, uh, from the main screen, select the email. Uh, and you get to this page here. <clears throat> it's not shown in a red box, but on the left side, it has a, a button that says 2. And you click that, and you can search or whoever's email you want to send this to yourself. Or if you want, you can just type it into the, the blank space. Um, and then once you've figured out uh, what the email is, then you just click Add, and that's where it's going to go. Um, now, if, if the resolution is not set at 300 dpi, and at least on our machine, it seems to be the default. It always defaults to that. Um, but on the advanced settings tab, you click on resolution, and then you have all the different choices that you can make. Uh, one thing I discovered when I was trying to test different resolutions was I click on one, and then if I forgot to click save, and then I send it to myself, and I look at it and I go, that's the same as the last one I did. Um, and that's because I didn't click save, and it defaulted to 300, so I was comparing the exact same thing. Um, and when Bell was talking about color, he showed a slide similar to this. These are photographs of it, actually, by the way. Um, is you have those four different um, choices you can make, the auto detect, black and white, grayscale, or color. Um, and it seems to default to auto detect. And then original type, um, photos and text, photo, text, map, even newspaper, magazine, you can choose. Um, and again, for whenever you get the opportunity, when you make a choice, it'll give you a chance to save and save it before you start, especially if you have a whole stack of documents. Uh, otherwise, it's going to go back to its defaults. Um, and file format. Um, this one here, it happens to be set at PDF. Um, and oops, I accidentally went back or forward. That's okay. So click on that, and you can choose among several different file formats. Um, you make your choice, and then once again, click save. Uh, otherwise, it's going to go to its default, which is, I believe, on our machine, it's PDF and not PDF. Is the default. And there are some uh, references uh, to look at, like the ISO standard uh, website for records management, um, and then preservation formats. Now, they have access to this through. Any questions? Yes. So are PDF-A files the same size as PDF, strength PDF, or are they smaller? Um, you know, they're going to be a little bit bigger because they're in the same thing. Okay. So I like to put all of my documents that are attached, I put them all in one PDF because I feel like I'm doing the people have to approve it in favors. They don't have to approve a bunch of things. But sometimes I do run into the exceeds file size limit. Why why is there a file size limit for one file when you can upload as many documents as you want? Does that make does my question make sense? It's for performance reasons. So you're sending um, this is the 
it's going across a number of companies. And these are probably the biggest um, packets of information in North Carolina going across the network back and forth. These are um, big documents. So if you do have um, uh, really, really big files, it's going to be um, have um, slots store performance. Sometimes um, if you read my documents, then it would be very hard to interact with North Carolina um, if the performance is that slow. And another reason for it is the, the, the software that North uh, Carolina is talking to does actually have a path um, that how they can send and that's, so those are two reasons why. Um, yes. So, so if I'm hearing you correctly, because a lot of times we're downloading, I'm speaking for myself, I'm downloading photos, mm -hmm. documents for trial. A lot of those are going to be your samples. And mm -hmm. a lot of times when you pull it up to view it before sitting, submitting you know, for approval on the other end, it's not quite so clear. So you have to basically write it on the side and make it clear. So what you're saying is I could go back into it, kind of like play a little bit into document gray, black and white, gray the document, yeah. um, and then change the pixels on it, and then try to send it to a game to see if it's clear enough for you. Yeah. Okay. You may have to experiment a little bit. Um, and one thing too is if you're scanning a document that has a signature on it. And you may have this really nice, you know, black and white document with really clear text and stuff, and then somebody's, you know, scribbled it. And it may be important to have the signature there. And the signature, you may, when you look at it after you scanned it, you can barely read. So you may have to adjust something like that, depending upon. Because you know, when people write their their name, they don't put the same pressure on every bit of every line. And part of it may be clear, and then the rest of it kind of fades out. And, and so if it, you know, backgrounds. So right. just like in the case of the passport, that background <clears throat> will actually cause it. It's harder to get that, so you may have to play around with the settings to make sure the yeah. um, text that you're looking <clears throat> for that's critical can be seen mm -hmm. through. Yeah. One little tidbit I wanted to add was when Suzanne was talking about being able to read files in the future. Years ago, we had a big project where we were converting from one document storage system to another. We were importing all these documents into uh, perceptive content or image now. Um, and in some cases, we ran across a few handful of files that had <clears throat> weird extensions, something that you just didn't recognize. And I do remember one, I don't remember what the extension was, but I finally found it on the web. And it turns out that it was from an old piece of software that was put out by Microsoft many years ago that no longer exists. Um, and we, we could not open this file at all. So it was, it was completely useless. Unless you happen to have this old, really old piece of software lying around somewhere and hope it'll run on a modern operating system. So it does happen that when you have these old files, sometimes if they're, if they're saved in a, in a specific format that was fine at the time, you may not be able to read it. Some point question. Mm -hmm. You said that you walk through the email lane itself when you scan the document. Mm -hmm. But what if I thought um, this document is sort of sensitive and I don't want it to be email? Is it possible to save it to a shared drive somewhere? Mm -hmm. There's a new option on the Commit Carolina copiers, at least it wasn't on ours. Yeah. Um, that doesn't say that there isn't on yours. Um, but if there isn't, then I would say the best option could potentially uh, be like the desktop scan. But that's uh, really, it's kind of machine specific as to whether or not that's there. Yeah. And if you're not sure, you should contact the copier. Yeah, because ours does that. Like we can yeah, do, yeah, I heard yeah. some here, uh -huh. some of the copiers on campus, too, but mm -hmm. I haven't seen. But you have to have like your own um, uh, same thing. So it'll so. save it to a drive for you somewhere. Yes. Oh, okay. it's still easier to do. Yeah. If it's something like a, a seventy-nine or something, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. All right. I have two more questions about PDF. 
CDSA because I've never heard of that before. Um, are you able to manipulate a PDFA just like a regular PDF, like as they come out, or is it like once you get it in a PDFA, that's just it? So it's similar to regular PDF, but it's should be your last step in practice, saving it as a PFA, and um, then all, um, if you have to circulate it to get various um, additions to it, that would be, yeah, and then the last step. Okay, okay. and then my last question is, um, going back to what I was saying, I'd like to put all my documents in one file, um, and sometimes I get the exceed limit that's it. And so then I save it as a compressed CDF. Can you do that with the PFA as well or no? Um, so that's a good question. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I would doubt that's part of the standard um, because. Compression would have to be. I'm not, I don't think compression is part of the standard, but I have to get back to you. Okay, I can probably look that up. <laughs> thank you. All right, I think I got the same question. I was already asking some about this. But yeah, you have to have to make it smaller. I'm curious if you do better. All right. So, is that, um, so we also like to hear about your experience. Is that a, a common experience that you get messages that say, this is too not really, I mean, it's not just always there, yes. <laughs> <laughs> not really, but I mean, it just depends, like, I've had some, it depends on how other people send me the documents, and I don't fix it before I try to, like, uh, they have a lot of like, independent contractor documents, and some of those packets, like, I've more in one, so there's, like, 20 to 25 pages in one, and so if they didn't their documents the right way and send them to me the right way and I don't fix it, then yeah, I'll get that message. But then I just go back and, you know, fix it and move on from there. So I wouldn't say it happens to me a lot. Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot regularly. Is that the same thing I have? I didn't think about getting my stuff or for when we travel, they have to submit maps of where they went and everything. And so we'll see if they want it. But it's just a small now, can I compress kind of a PDF like on that file? You know, the one Can I make that compress that smaller and then save that as a PDFA? Okay. Um, I think it'd be the same as PDFA, and the software allows you to do it, but it's not. It's following the standards only. Okay. And I want to get back to. And I think I've misstated something. It's, it's a read only kind of format, not dialogue. But if you're circulating something inside your area, you know, you know that point that you want to save it permanently, that's not the best. Okay. 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 I think it's a good one. So if I have a PDF, we do that, we get it edited. And then I want to save as a PFA. I just do save as and PFA is an option. I was missing this whole time. I'm just curious how much you have. Um, so, if, for instance, if you could go into like Word, like save as, um, and you select that, there's an advanced tab, and if you click on that advanced PFA, is one of the options. Okay. What is already PFA? What is already straight up in there? Um, that if you have Acrobat, you should be able to put Acrobat in all states. Okay, okay, cool. So, you, it's going to be amazing. I've heard that to you. Yeah, I'm glad y'all are really good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Know, safe and better for the long term. How many folks are using Carolina Copies? Everyone else had like a desktop system or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
the wrong goal, so I think we are happier. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't have these yeah. Yeah. Older scanners. I, I have an older scanner on my desk, and I can't say, you know, scan it to PDF. So I'm sure the newer ones have all kinds of fancy options. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good one. Yeah. You too. Was it coming up?